Hey, good morning, it's Dr. Shirley. How are you today? Welcome to today's show. Today we're talking all about your eye health, okay? Sometimes people think that you can't change your eyes, that your eyes are gonna normally just get weaker as we get older, that your eyes are gonna be a little bit more difficult to see, that we're always, always, always gonna need glasses, but that's not necessarily the case. So today we're gonna talk about some of the difficulties that go on with our eyes. We're gonna talk about some of the herbs and vitamins that are helpful. We're gonna talk about some of the um, foods that can make a difference, and then also some of the, quote, diseases that may go on and remember, dis-ease is, you know, just like that, dis-ease. There is not an ease with what is going on within our body. So we're going to talk for some natural remedies. And so thank you for joining me today. So I'm Dr. Shirley Picaretto. I'm a doctor of naturopathy. I've been helping people get well naturally for over 30 years now. I also teach a certified herbalist course. And um, I do some personal consultation. I especially work with people, um, you know, with 9 and 30-day cleanses for weight loss and detox. Because so much of our health, and you'll hear about this, you know, today, so much of our health is related, you know, to the the toxins that we have in our body. You'd be amazed at how this is going to affect your eyes as well. So hey Casey, nice to see you. Morning Michelle. Hi, hi, hi Cindy. Nice to see you here. So let's talk about um, our health and start you know really right with our eyes. So our vision really depends upon our lifestyle. Now, obviously we may have some you know, genetic weaknesses. There's always a little bit of that going on but you know we can have better health for our eyes based on the choices that we make. So just like all the other health whether it's weight loss or whether it's you know good heart health or good digestive health it's really going to be you know directly related to how we choose to live our life so again you may think that you can't change that but I want to tell you a little bit of a story about my mom my mom lived to a very you know, nice age of 93 but when she was about 75 she had probably been taking some of the herbs I had recommended I bet for four or five different years she was taking bee pollen she was taking alfalfa she took spirulina she took a skeletal strength which I love which has a calcium magnesium she took essential fatty acids trying to think what else I know she took vitamin E and some D and you know she was really you know she took uh, things for a long time but when she went to the doctor to get her eyes checked okay at the age of 75 she needed a new prescription and you think hmm, that's not that unusual but you know what her eyes had gotten stronger and so the prescription was actually lesser than her other prescription based on some of the vitamins at age 75 that she was taking so really you know how, how cool is that so do know I guess this isn't a double-blind placebo-controlled study, but do know that you know this can indeed happen. So we can turn back the clock, you know, with our eyes. Our eyes more than ever are having all kinds of strain, right? You know, we've got iPads, we've got iPhones. We, I mean, you can't send the post office without looking at the TV. You see kids in a restaurant. This is really. You know, I get into a little of my personal here, but you see kids, you know, the mom and dad, you know, are talking and say so the kids, they've got an iPad you know, popped up on each, you know, um, you know, little high chair, right? You know, so you think about kids are being born now and how much exposure they're getting, but we're all, you have to think about our screen time and our screen adjustment because it really is having an effect and you will start to see more eye related, um, whether that's a macular degeneration, which we're going to talk about, or whether cataracts, and you will start to see more of that just based on the exposure, okay, that we have. So first of all, we'll talk about a little bit um, you know with the retina the retina is you know obviously part of the eye it's a back part of our eye it's you know where the actually the photo they call photoreceptor cells and these cells are which you know from the nerve impulses take what they see and then this enables our vision so the retina is obviously a super important you know, part of the eat of the eye. The other thing that you may hear a little bit about, hey, good morning, Gretchen. Hey, Lisa, nice to see you. Hey, Yusuf. Um, the other part of the eye is, is the macula, okay? And the macula is responsible for your central vision. Super important. You may have heard the term ARMD, and that's um, that is age-related macular degeneration. So there's almost like an expectation, especially if someone's dealing you know, with a diabetic situation, that the eyes are going to start to get weaker. But again, they do not have to. So some of the ways that you may know you've got a macular degeneration going going on is you may start to have wavy or blurred vision, okay? So it's really noticeable um, on a regular basis. You have a visual distortion. Again, this can be hard to describe, but meaning things that are square maybe don't look as square, or things that are round, you know, look a little bit blurred around the line. So this, you know, it really starts to obviously affect our health. I mean, you know, I can't imagine, you know, not having my eyes in. So I really believe they're an organ, you know, that we really want to take good care of because it's the kind of thing that can be life impacting. You can go through life a long time by having a bum knee and you can go through life a long time by having, you know, trouble with gas or constipation, but your life is going to change completely, completely 
completely, you know, if you don't have access to good eyesight. So take some notes on this and maybe start to add in some of these things to your diet. So along with the macula, you also have a change in color perception. So this isn't the same as a night blindness, but an overall color, you know, perception, you know, you know, from a you know, blue to a black to, you know, to a brown, you just actually see things differently than you used to, or maybe the way someone else uh, used to. And then we also would need a brighter light to see. We can't, the light needs to be super bright if we're having some degeneration going on for us to see. And those are just, you know, some of the signs that go on, you know, with that. Now, cataracts are another thing. Cataracts are fairly common. I'm sure you know some of the hazards. It's a milky-like film that goes over the eye. It, it, over the age of 80, over 50% of people have cataracts. Some of them do have surgery. And from what I understand, this can be, you know, a wonderful, wonderful surgery. Um, but let's, you know, see if we can, you know, start to you know, prevent, you know, some of that. Um, it actually clouds the lens. So again, you have, you know, a blurry vision, a difficulty seeing. Um, aging has a lot to do with it. Just a general breakdown and a weakness. But again, we can support that with our vitamins, with our herbs, and with our lifestyle. So it doesn't have to be, everything doesn't have to be age related. We can't just expect to say, oh, well, I'm 60, I'm 70, I'm 50. You know, I remember years ago, I had written my book, and this young girl, she's 32 years old. She's always got her head in her hands, like, oh, poor me, I'm 30, I don't feel good. You know, like, you know, and, and it was really just like, and it very interesting, and you hear people, or even, you know, we celebrate, oh, over the hill at 50. I don't think so, but a lot of this is attitude, and also is an expectation. Well, my mom wore glasses, or my dad had bad eyes, so I'm going to have bad eyes, too. No, that means that you may have a weakness there, but it does, obviously, something you know you can uh, you can work on so some of the causes believe it or not are toxins all right now I think I've said this in just about every area that we've talked about but toxins can have a huge effect on, on the breakdown of the eyes it can actually um, be stored in that area and, and start to have a, a negative effect on the eye dehydration is another one you all know now today and we I'm here in upstate New York it is hot I'm probably shiny it's like we never put the air on I think today's gonna be a day for the air but if we don't have enough water enough water and hydration in our body we do get these dry eyes there's also medications that can create a, a dry eye as well too i don't mean create it but it's a side effect of that so again you have to think about that I don't ever tell people to get off or on, you know, a medication. I was talking to someone the other day who works in the, you know, does beautiful work in helping people be beautiful in a hair salon. But along with that, you know, is a lot of, you know, toxins that can come along. So if you're working um, in an environment, you know, that there are toxins, maybe you're a painter or you're, maybe you work um, in, in dry cleaning, maybe you work in the fertilizer department at Lowe's Home Depot, Lowe's or Home Depot. You, do you know what I'm saying? So if you're subject to that, there's going to be another you know, entry in a more of a breakdown of those toxins um, if you're around them on a regular basis. Poor nutrition has the most to do with your eye health. Poor nutrition, malabsorption, and poor nutrition is what's going to help, not help, but help to create a decline, you know, within your eyes. Smoking has a big effect, okay? It's a, it's a constrictor um, as far as, you know, with your veins um, and, you know, it's not allowing nutrients you know, to an area. Plus the smoke itself, you know, is, is another thing. People who work, let's say if you're working outside doing, you know, black top or you're you know, in a chemical environment, again, things actually, you know, smoke, you know, in the eyes, um, soldering, you know, certain artwork. I, I do some pottery and even some of those, you know, eyes you know, can you know, can be difficult because you know, they get into the body so we don't always think that our hobbies and our work may affect our health but you know they very much do um alcohol has a big effect on the eyes and you'll see why in a couple minutes because we're going to talk about the liver okay alcohol liver related to you know related to the eyes maybe you didn't know that and obesity too it's like you know, the more of these shows I do, and I think we're up to 40, so just as a side note, if there's any that you want to watch, they're all on my webpage, and a lot of them are on YouTube, so you can subscribe to my channel there, and then when I have a new one, if you you know, if you aren't loyal, and, you know, I don't mean to say it in a bad way, but, like, not everyone's going to sit and watch this. We get a lot of views, but not all of them, you know, are live, but you can pick those up, you know, on YouTube. So the obesity definitely has effect on our eyes as well, too, and that is probably, to me, just pressure. And when you think about it, if you, you know, if you are carrying an extra 30, 40, 50, you know, 100 pounds, I mean, it's like a house, a structure, we're only you know if you've put you know like if you live like Cindy does up in the Adirondacks and it's not an unusual to get eight feet of snow and that falls on top of a roof it's gonna hurt the structure so just like if we have extra weight on our body every four pounds of weight puts it you know I'm sorry every pound of extra weight puts four pounds of pressure on your knee okay so if this is putting pressure on your knee and pressure on your heart it's putting pressure on your eyes as well too okay so maybe it's time you know to really get serious about you know biting the bullet finding your why and figure out why let's get some of this weight off and you know and feel really, really good. Um, I want to talk about pink eye quickly only because I've had a lot of experience with it. 
Probably if you have kids, most of you know that your kids get pink eye, adults get pink eye, and can be very, very difficult. And I've had tremendous success um, using what's called um, colloidal silver or silver shield. And I remember God, yeah, my kids, they were just so you know, so open. I remember you know, my son Taylor, like he had pink eye, picked it up in the daycare, very easy to do. But that thing can go on for like 10 days or two weeks. Very, very infectious. I just laid him on his back and I put some of the silver shield in his eye. Blink, blink, in you know, both eyes. It's cool. You know, there's no side effects or whatever. And do you know that that thing was just cleared up within the next 24 hours? So again, I'm not prescribing this to anyone. I'm just saying there are natural alternatives and natural things that are out there for various things that our body, and this is one that I found very successful. Um, I also found um, that to be successful with some of my clients who took that same advice. So let's talk about some of the nutrients that can be helpful um, from the food standpoint and from vitamin, mineral, herbal standpoint. Um, Vitamin C is the most important for your eye, okay? Vitamin C is the most important for your eye. Um, risk of cataracts goes down 30% if you have enough vitamin C in your body. Now, this can be fruits, vegetables. I think I've told you all I take a, a, a fruit drink every morning. It's not a drink, but it's like 30, 22 concentrated fruits, and I throw it in my protein drink. And then I take 22 concentrated vegetables, and I throw that in my protein drink. There's no way I'm getting enough fruits and vegetables in with my food. I like to, and we eat well, but I, I don't want to miss a beat, so I want to take all of this stuff. So by getting your vitamin C and those are your apples, your oranges, you know, your limes, your, your grapefruits, you know, a lot of your citrus has you know, vitamin C in it. And believe it or not, the Barbados cherry, I just found this out. The Barbados cherry is the number one fruit that has the most vitamin C and there's over 80 milligrams in this Barbados cherry. I don't know whether we get the Barbados cherry from Barbados or whether we can get this at the grocery store, so we'll have to stay tuned on that. One of the reasons vitamin um, C is so good that it builds collagen, so it helps with you know structure you know, within the eyes and with the skin. And then it also helps to bolster and strengthen the capillaries. So remember, our capillaries are, you know, our veins break down into our capillaries and they you know, break to bring nutrients to a specific area. So that is going to make a big difference is vitamin C. Vitamin E is another super important one. I recommend 400 units. I've been taking that for years and years and years, and um, it does protect against, it's been shown to protect against cataracts, and there was one study that I was reading about that shown there's a 50% less chance in, of cataracts if you're getting enough vitamin E, and so how simple is some of this preventative medicine, right? Your basic vitamins, your basic fruits, your basic vegetables, we're starting to get the same language, you know, all the way around, but these are some that can help and, you know, perhaps even reverse what you're living with. Um, okay, floaters. Does anyone know who the floaters are from? We've got some smart people on here today. Nice to see you. You know, Barb, hey, Sonia, nice to see you. Anyone have an idea of what floaters might be caused from? Do you know what the floaters are? I've only had them a couple times. Sometimes you're seeing the sun, and then when you're sitting there, and all of a sudden the stuff is like, you know, little you know, threads are floating by, you know, your your eye, or there's little spots that are there. That's what's, you know, that's what your, your floaters are. And believe it or not, those are caused by an overstressed liver. Okay, so here we go again. Time to, you know, to, time to cleanse out your body. So you'll notice a huge difference if you do a detox and whether that is you know, a, like the, the Clean Start program that I recommend, that liver, kidney, um, you know, bowel, and you know, getting all that settled. Yeah, Michelle's right. Yeah, she's got it on the head. It is the liver. The liver seems to be the key you know, to all of these crazy things that go on with it within our body. And so if we clear out our liver and we clear out the toxins from our body fat and we clear out our kidneys, this has to happen on a regular basis, believe it or not, folks. I don't mean every week or every month, but I mean, you, you the best time of year that your body wants to cleanse is in the springtime okay that's the number one time you may notice like here in the northeast is when we start and when the dandelions come up right you see the dandelions in the yard and that's actually um, dandelion is one of the major herbs that cleanses our liver it's a light cleanse so if you're someone that's taking medication or like my friend I was talking the other day who's you know in a hair salon you know I suggest either milk thistle um, which removes toxins or, or dandelion too just taking one of those on a daily basis and that was another thing I forgot to mention with my mom where she had you know, regained so much better sight she was on uh, some medication I had her on just one dandelion a day so we were constantly moving you know that through the body so springtime is a great time to cleanse, and then again in the fall. And then with any other situational type of things, like every time after, you know, I fly, you know, I always, always cleanse. We've been subject to so many things. I still have not found a great answer you know, to my hair, so I'm still dyeing my hair. This drives me crazy. Um, but after I dye my hair, even the day before and two or three days afterwards, I'm like flushing that stuff, you know, way right out of my body because I, I just don't want it in anymore. But let's say you've been, um, you, you just did a big painting project inside or, you know, again with your work. So take time to 
cleanse the body, you'd be amazed at how many things you know are going to clear up. Um, some of the other things, and, and also to the eyes and the liver are are connected. Okay, um, you, you know about like with babies are experiencing jaundice. Not only is the skin discolored, but you know, but the eyes are as well too. So you're going to see that liver eye connection in many many um, of the health. Um, health ailments or difficulties that we're, you're trying to work with. Um, some of the things that are super helpful um, is bilberry. And bilberry is an herb, and you'll see that in a lot of your eye combinations. So doesn't mean you have to take all these supplements. I would look for an eye combination. There's um, there's actually an herb called Eye Bright. Believe it or not, Eye Bright, Brighter Eyes. And, in, and that herb is for your eyes. You know, go figure. How simple is that? So bilberry, Eye Bright, you might see lutein, L-U-T-E-I-N. And this can help to build up the elasticity. And then the, the bilberries and even blueberry, very helpful um, for inflammation, okay? So just like we have inflammation um, in our heart or in our lungs or in our body affecting cholesterol, um, we can also have inflammation that is affecting our eyes and you know our eyesight as well too. Um, things like um, foods with beta carotene. So yes, your carrots are really, really you know good for your eyes. Hi, Sandy. Nice nice to see you. Hey, Denise. Good morning. Good morning. Um, zinc is also super helpful for the, for the eye. So again, I'm going to name off about 12 things here. This doesn't mean you have to go out and take 12 different things. Find yourself a source of good nutrition and again, if you need suggestions, I obviously have some. I just don't like to do you know, a huge amount of promotion. I just more you know, just want to do health. But if you want my recommendation, of course, you can call me. Um, but the idea is, is if you are working on this area, get a good eye. You know, get a good eye combination. It doesn't have a lot of crap in it. You also, you know, um, if you're doing it like a fruit or vegetable way, um, kale is a great source um, to be very shown to be directly um, effective reflected for good eye um spinach so you see your greens your leafy greens which is why i take these every single day um your any dark green vegetables this might be like the you know, asparagus is out right now oh it's so good um you know and your, your spinach and any of those broccolis you know good 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 you know for your eyes egg yolks egg yolks are wonderful for your eyes they contain some good essential fatty acids they contain some lecithin and this helps to build up the elasticity and the permeability okay when our cells detox and take nutrients in it depends on what the permeability and that's why things like your E and your lecithin and your essential fatty acids are going to help make those cells more permeable so they can detox and take in um, you know, take in nutrients um, as well too. So that's one of the reasons behind the egg yolks. And eggs are good for you. If you haven't heard me say this before, eat your eggs, make sure they're, you know, they're grass fed and, you know, and they're not, um, we had tried some, you know, at all these, and I like all these, don't get me wrong, but they had some eggs for 99 cents. I'm like, ah, I didn't want to use them in baking, but now all these has organic eggs and they're at a really good price and they're farm raised. And, you know, so this is a huge difference and how a good egg tastes and you know, there really really is um some of the other things that are good are yellow peppers which i think are delicious especially with some, you know, some pasta sweet potato i love sweet potatoes sweet potatoes are very high in potassium they're very high in your minerals they're very high in fiber they shouldn't be very good you know for your eyes carrots of course remember what's up doc very very good you can put these if you like to juice um, again find us a vegetable or fruit supplement that you know, can can do all that for you and then things like um garlic always good because garlic is anti-inflammatory garlic can be good for so many things within the body. There's one of the reasons um, in Russia, they used to call it Russian penicillin because no one really had medication. I just had garlic. I've used garlic on my teeth. If I've had a tooth problem waiting to go um, into the dentist, it's good for your heart. It's been shown to be good for blood pressure. So garlic is something to get into your cooking and get into your body as often as you can. Um, blueberries, the, the blueberry is one of the best antioxidants. I love those in my drinks in the morning. And the goji berry, that's G-O-J-I, goji berry. You can buy those dry and snack on them. Sometimes Sometimes they're in a trail mix, and sometimes you can put them into your drink um, as well, too. So that's pretty much it for our eye health today. Thank you for being with you. Anyone have any questions? If you'd put a like up there or any kind of um, comment, I would appreciate that. Um, we're getting a lot of great traction. I've got people watching you from all over the world, which is great, and it truly is my mission to be able to bring good health naturally um, to anyone and everyone who, who wants to listen. So if you have any interest, you can go to my website at um, getwellnaturallynow.com. My certified herbalist course is there. I help and train people. And then I also exclusively work with a nine and a 30 day um, weight loss program, which has been really successful you know, for all of my uh, clients. So have yourself a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye.